You're about to see something truly astounding. A discovery that's caused an absolute sensation. One that could have untold significance for every one of us. And not only that, it's a totally engrossing mystery story too. You're about to meet a family that shouldn't exist. A family like no other. They could just be the missing link between man and ape. The holy grail scientists have sought for generations. They're living, breathing men and women, but they walk on all fours, just as we did four million years ago. And until this film was shot, they were hidden away, unseen by the outside world. The evolution tech has been known to just a handful of experts who have been sworn to secrecy. When I heard of it myself, I was intrigued, but nothing prepared me for the reality. Now, finally, the secret can be revealed. The immediate response I had was that I, just, I couldn't believe my eyes. I had never expected that, in, you know, under most extraordinary scientific fantasy, that modern human beings could return to an animal state. In scientific terms, it was the equivalent of finding living, breathing fossils. Human beings who had never made the evolutionary leap of standing upright. The quest to find out why took a team of scientists on an amazing journey and raised profound questions about what it is to be human. The thing which marks us off from the rest, rest of the animal world is the fact that we're the species which walks on two legs and holds our heads high in the air. It's what defines us as it's human in, beings. In many ways, yes, of course, there's language and all sorts of other things too, but um, it's terribly important to our sense of ourselves as, as being different from, from others in the animal kingdom. These people cross that boundary. Professor Nick Humphrey is an evolutionary psychologist. He first heard of the family through a medical paper produced by Turkish scientists. It looks as if we really did have something rather like a throwback in evolution, a turning back of the evolutionary clock. Um, and the Turkish professor who invited us there, that's the way he thought about it. And in fact, others in the scientific community took up that line and said, yes, here, for all the world, is a, is a genetic problem which has undone of the last few million years of evolution and returned them to a primitive stage. It sounded like the anthropological find of the millennium, a once-in-a-lifetime discovery that scientists dream of. If the family proved to be true quadrupeds walking on all fours, they may provide the elusive missing link between man and ape. Humphrey set out for Turkey with the scientific team to record his findings. This is a very exciting moment for us. Um, we don't know quite what we're going to expect. St. Michael speaks, saying, My children, listen and overstand. Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Yahweh with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own overstanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Today there are many crafts in the sky. These crafts are here to pick you up, their children. However, the evil Luciferians in human form aided by the cursed seed of Canaan and their brothers the Halabians, Flugelrods, or Hulub are on the rise in many names and organizations throughout the world today. They are trying their best, through the media and mind control, to make you, the children of the Anunnaki, a Luhum regress back to your state of Homo erectus with the aid of black devils, if you regress back to that state, then my children the elders have no reason to come for you, for it is Homo sapien that is in our image and after our likeness. They live and worship the image of the beast, and not the image in which we the Anunnaki created them in. And he, the devil, had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause to be killed as many as would not worship the image of the beast. The Luciferians who are the Halabians, Flugelrods or Hulub, the fathers of one of the albino races, today tries to reduce the importance of melanin. They being of all the creatures on the planet with melanin, the most melanin recessive. Yet, controlling propaganda and the media tries to hide the very word melanin. Therefore, the melaninites and their evolutionary descendants are the personification of the original creative forces, HU, seven in all. As the seven species of Riskians, you have seven species of melaninites, or Nuwabians, called Negroids. And you have three species of Mongoloids and two species of Caucasoid, all growing out of the original Nuwabians. The merging of these two extreme races of the Caucasian and the Nuban brought about a being that reflects the traits of both the Negroid and the Caucasoid, sometime referred to as Mulatos. 
Today, the original Halabians, Flugelrods still live underground, but they're hybrid children like Jacob Rothschild. Nathaniel Charles Jacob Rothschild, 4th Baron Rothschild, OM, GBE, CVO, was a British peer, investment banker, and member of the Rothschild banking family. Mark Davis, the 69-year-old owner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Richard Branson, founder of the Virgin Group. William Henry Gates III, also known as Bill Gates, is an American businessman and philanthropist best known for his roles at Microsoft Corporation. Horace Greeley was an American newspaper editor and publisher who was the founder and editor of the New York Tribune. Billy Woodard, the guy from Center Earth, who worked with the government. Albert Pike was an American author, poet, orator, editor, lawyer, jurist, and Confederate States Army general who served as an associate justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court in exile from 1864 to 1865. Walter Ashby Plecker, April 2, 1861, August 2, 1947, was an American physician and public health advocate who was the first registrar of Virginia's Bureau of Vital Statistics, serving from 1912 to 1946. Keep in mind the middle name Ashby, as in Ashtar Command. He was a leader of the Anglo-Saxon Clubs of America, a white supremacist organization founded in Richmond, Virginia in 1922. Samuel Langhorn Clemens, known by the pen name Mark Twain, was an American writer, humorist, and essayist. Henri de Massou, first Marquis de Rouvigny, was a French diplomat. All these guys are Halabians, flugelrod hybrid children. They can clean up and walk amongst humans. One of the groups of hybrid flugelrod tribes is called the Huguenots. The Huguenots were a group of French Protestants who fled their country in the 16th and 17th centuries to escape religious persecution. The Huguenots were followers of John Calvin, a leading Protestant theologian, and were drawn from a variety of backgrounds including the middle class, skilled artisans, military men, and scholars. The Huguenots faced persecution by the French Catholic government during a period of religious violence and civil war. The most infamous massacre of Protestants in European history occurred in Paris on St. Bartholomew's Day in 1572. Many Huguenots fled to other countries to seek freedom of belief, including England, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Germany, North America, South Africa, and Russia. Many Huguenots settled in England, where they brought their skills in finance, industry, medicine, arts, and crafts. Not all the Halabians, Flugelrods, were disagreeable. One third of them, who were the good ones, broke off and set up an advanced cave system under Mount Shasta. They became known as the Telotians. These are the good ones, the Hopi tribe are in contact with. The original Halabians, Flugelrods are your Flintstones, Hillbilly people, your real caveman. Hillbilly is a term for people who dwell in rural mountainous areas in the United States, primarily in the Appalachian region and Ozarks. As people migrated out of the region during the Great Depression, the term spread northward and westward with them. Hillbilly, as a term for someone regarded as uneducated, is also often disparaging, but it is used less to suggest that a person has offensive views and more that they're dim-witted or simple-minded because they live in the country, usually among hills or mountains, far away from cities with more, or presumably better land, off-grid. Mongoloid is a term that refers to a racial grouping of people from various parts of Asia, the Americas, and some regions of Europe and Oceania. The term is based on a theory of biological race that has since been disproven. Synonyms for Mongoloid include Mongolian race, yellow, Asiatic, and Oriental. If we were to categorize populations under this classification, three major groups could be considered as Mongoloid. North Asian Mongoloid, including East Asians like Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, Southeast Asian Mongoloid, including Malay and Indo-Chinese populations, and American Indian Mongoloid, including Native American populations. The Mongol Empire was founded by Genghis Khan, who united various tribes into one country. The empire was divided into four khanates after Genghis Khan's death in 1227. The khanates included the Golden Horde, the Khanate of Persia, the Khanate of Turkestan, and the Khanate of the Khakan. The Mongol Empire declined due to the Black Death and Civil War and was replaced by new states by 1368. The lesser Khanates that emerged were eventually absorbed by Russia, with the last Khanate, Kokand, falling in 1876. The Hun comes from the Halabians, Flugelrods mixing with the Taros and Sans people. The Huns were a nomadic people who lived in Central Asia, the Caucasus and Eastern Europe between the 4th and 6th centuries AD. 
According to European tradition, they were first reported living east of the Volga River, in an area that was part of Scythia at the time. The Huns were warriors who invaded and terrorized Europe and the Roman Empire in the 4th and 5th centuries, A.D. their military achievements, ferocity in battle, and ruthlessness towards conquered peoples. Most likely from somewhere between the eastern edge of the Altai Mountains and the Caspian Sea, roughly modern Kazakhstan. They arrived in southeastern Europe in about 370 CE. They established a vast empire on the Danubian frontier of the Roman Empire in Europe by 430. Their leader Rugila, or Rua, was the first known king to rule the Huns and was succeeded by his nephews Bleda and Attila. The Huns were defeated in 455, and by the end of the century, they were no longer a united group. The dirty Moors called Romans employed the Huns as mercenaries to fight against German tribes and defend Italy against a Gothic invasion. The term Hun was also used by the Allies to refer to the forces of Germany and Austro-Hungary during World War I. Negroid was a racial classification of people indigenous to Africa and some parts of Asia, but it's now considered an obsolete term. Negroid was a racial classification for people with dark skin, broad noses, and coarse hair texture. It was used to describe people from Africa, south of the Sahara and the Great Lakes, as well as isolated parts of Southeast and South Asia. The term was introduced in the 1780s by the Göttingen School of History and further developed by Western scholars during colonialism. It was based on the idea that race was a biological category, which has since been disproven. The American Association of Biological Anthropologists states that race is not an accurate way to represent human biological variation. Many people cannot be assigned exclusively to one racial category and are instead considered to be of mixed ancestry. Caucasoid subspecies could be considered the Mediterranean and Nordic races, which are often categorized as primary Caucasoid groups, displaying distinct physical characteristics within the broader Caucasoid category. Caucasoid is a broad term encompassing many different populations with diverse features, not a single species. Other potential Caucasoid subgroups include the Alpine, Armenoid, Dinaric, and East Baltic races. Caucasian variety were white, pale or red-skinned, rosy-cheeked, narrow-nosed individuals who were Yakub's grafted people. Technically, most people who think they are Caucasian are not. In order to be a true Caucasian, you must have blonde hair and blue eyes and come from the Caucasus mountain area. Most people that think they are Caucasian are really mulattoes. The Kanaz spread all over Tiamat, now called the planet Earth, and they carried with them the Caucasoid, who desired to rule the world on orders of their master Yakub. The people of Akhenate were typically nomadic and lived in tribal societies on the Eurasian steppe. These societies were ruled by a Khan, Kagan, Katun, or Kanum, who gained power through the support of their warrior subjects. The people of Akhenate paid tribute to their leader in order to fund the realm. The Kazan Khanate was home to a variety of languages, including Tatar, Chuvash, Mari, Mordvin, and Bashkir. The main population of the steppes were the nomadic Mangites, also known as Nogais. The Crimean Khanate included the Crimean Peninsula and the adjacent steppes. The territory of the Crimean Khanate was often called Little Tartary by English-speaking writers. Without explaining before men and women of all races, Negroid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid, they all come from one blood, the blood of the Nuban or Negroid. Why are there so many diverse types of blood? Because of mixing, which created the others. Walking in the midst of man without flesh color. With blue eyes, hair yellow, made manifest that you may know the cursed seed of Canaan and albinoism or the grafted seed, the Halabians, flugel rods or hulub of Yakub, from the original Nuwabian Tahite, Ethiopian Kushite, the Melaninites, so you have Caucasoid and Negroid demons and devils in human form. The so-called main races of man are not considered races scientifically, but species. According to the Western Caucasoid theology, they, the Caucasoids, evolved from the Neanderthal. And according to other Western Caucasoid theology, they originally resided in Europe and Asia, then expanded to Africa up to where some of them reside now, which is in North America. There are five races or scientifically known species. Negroid, the brown race, Caucasoids, the pale race, Mongoloids, the oriental race, Australoids, the archaic pale race, Congoids who started on the same level as the Eurasiatic ones in the early Middle Pleistocene. They stood still for half a million years after which the Pygmies and Capoids who they say just appeared in existence from nowhere. The Caucasoids claim they are the first civilized race to walk the earth. 
caucasoids and australoids are the same. The only difference between the two is the caucasoids are considered the albino and the australoids are considered the ancient pale race, also albino. Albinism is a genetic condition that results in a partial or complete lack of melanin, the pigment that gives color to skin, hair, and eyes. People or animals with albinism are often described as having the following characteristics. Very pale skin that burns easily in the sun and doesn't tan. Exposed skin may appear pinkish due to visible blood vessels. White or very light blonde hair but can also be brown or red eyes, reddish pink or blue eyes. The eyes are extremely sensitive to light because the blood vessels in the iris are visible through the transparent parts. Vision defects, such as blurry or distorted vision, reduce depth perception, crossed eyes, rapid eye movements, and light sensitivity. Albinism is a lifelong condition that doesn't worsen over time. People with albinism are generally healthy, but they have an increased risk of developing skin cancer. To protect their skin, people with albinism can wear broad-spectrum sunscreen with at least SPF 30. Albinism is a rare genetic condition caused by mutations or changes of certain genes that affect the amount of melanin your body produces. Melanin controls the pigmentation, color, of your skin, eyes, and hair. People with albinism have extremely pale skin, eyes, and hair. When they say that different races originated out of one another, and they evolve out of the ape man, this is their way of justifying their origin. Albinism in some of the caucasoids came out of a disease or sickness called leproma or leprosy. Canons, Canaan's offsprings, lived in caves and committed bestiality. They mixed their seeds with dogs. In time, they descended to the level of animals, eating raw carcasses, walking on all fours and mingling freely with the animals, mainly dog-like animals. In the prehistoric days, there were no selected locations for a species to live. They moved to adapt to their environment, the weather, and their food supply. The Heidelberg man stands on a baseline of its own, not being related with the Homo erectus or Homo sapiens because there is no Mauer cranium. These bones date back from the great second Mindel Riss interglacial about 325,000 years ago. The Neanderthals had massive brown ridges, low broad cranial vault, and a jaw that projects beyond their upper pan of their face, which distinguishes them from the modern man. It is believed that primitive morphology of the Neanderthal was the result of special adaptation. The Neanderthals exhibit a great deal of sexual dimorphism, the existence of two different species, especially in the same population in height and cranial capacity. Their women are somewhat disproportionately short, yet they gave birth to children of a race which had bigger heads than modern man who is known as Homo sapiens. The pelvic adaption of the Neanderthal woman had to be wide to permit birth because their interior pelvic bone, the rim of their pelvis, which would have to be the gynecoid which is a well-rounded anterior and posterior segment pelvic inlet, had to be widened without widening the dimensions of the bone too much. The Neanderthal women were stocky with visible wide hips for their size. Evolutionary line based on Fonte Chavade Swamscombe. Fonte Chavade people seem to have crossed sapient threshold about 225,000 years ago as far as morphology, the biological study of the form and structure of organisms. Swanscombe might be considered as a very primitive expression of Homo sapiens. Swanscombe was not recovered from a stratified site. It consists of three separate fragments found at three different times in river gravel. The bones are believed to have belonged to a woman. The Fonte Chavad crania, the part of the skull enclosing the brain, is 100,000 years younger, yet it is related to the Steinheim Swanscombe. Due to the ice ages, the abrupt change in the climate, many civilizations died, prehistoric humankind and animals. Again you have a Caucasian who has blonde hair and blue eyes, descendants from the Hulub flugel rods, these Hulub flugel rods, are now living in a cavern beneath the Antarctic. They are the fathers of the Nordic race, not to be confused with the Canaanites whose leprosy is the result of a curse of albinism cast upon Ham, the father of Canaan by Utnafishtim called Noah after the craft that rested down on the surface of the earth after the waters decreased. The albino seed's name comes from the sea Albion called the White Island. It is in the land of the Saxons and the Angelicas called Brit today. These Hulub flugel rods are originally from the Aldebaran star constellation and the Pleiades. They produce extremely low levels of melanin. What is the importance of this thing called melanin? The pigment melanin is responsible for the color of skin. When melanin does not appear in the skin, it is a deficiency. However, this has nothing to do with the amount in your brain called neuromelanin, 
and the rest of your organs. For instance, albinos you will still have a certain level of melanin in their heart, arteries, and liver, although they lack it in their skin. This deficiency comes about because of the absence of melanocytes, that which synthesizes the melanin is deficient, which interferes with the journey of pigment cells to a developing embryo. The deficiency of tyrosine, which is a copper-containing enzyme that works as a catalyst or vehicle that causes the production of melanin and other pigments from tyrosine. These cells called melanocytes are responsible for all the colors of hair from yellow to black. The tree-like melanocyte cells in the deeper epidermis is what produces this dark brown pigment called melanin. The pigment is introduced into nearby cells through the branch tips of the melanocyte cells, in units called melanosomes. Know that hair turns gray when the melanocytes die. There are different textures of hair, 6 ether to 9 ether. Hair can be straight, 6 ether meaning 6 point melanin, wavy, curly 7 and 1 half point melanin or kinky, 9-point ether, and it is in that kinky or kingly hair that was given to you from your parents, the Anunnaki Aluham. Then there are those beings who are albinos. This genetic disorder albinism is a group of genetic disorders affecting one out of every several thousand humans and other animals. The first being Canaan himself. His curse was the removal of the divine, which was the reduction of melanin thus cutting off his family ties with the Aluham. He transformed from a son of the Aluham to a son of Samuel. For you that are born an albino, if both your parents are albinos, then you can only be an albino. This is because your parent does not possess any of the dominant genes. Albinism, if carried in the genes of two Nubians, will produce an albino offspring and mixing of your seed depletes your melanin. When the Anunnaki took residence in Arcturus, the original home of the Taros, they mixed their seed with them who were copper tone in hue while the Anunnaki were olive green tone in hue. This mixture is why Anunnaki appear copper tone in hue. This mixing took place for 7,000 years. Eating the improper foods or overeating overloads your body as well. Overeating overexerts all of the organs in the body just to digest the food, which is why you shouldn't eat after a certain time because it keeps the body constantly working when it should be resting. Then your connection is blocked, thus disease manifests. Melanin is deranged only when it becomes toxic and any individuals who might have toxic melanin will act in a very similar manner, that which is primitive, animalistic, and barbaric. This is why there is a great concentration on drugging the Nubians of the Western world. Melanin has physical properties and personality traits which distinguished it from others. Melanin smells sweet. Your body is dedicated to making melanin, which has nine substances of its own, as long and this is as you eat reasonably. Wake my child, for the time is near. Each cell in the human body needs its own oxygen carried by the blood. Human blood is similar to chlorophyll of the plant life. Human blood has two main constituents. The cells are corpuscles comprised of 45% and the liquid portion or plasma in which the cells are suspended comprises 55%. The blood cell comprises three main types, red blood cells or erythrocytes, white blood cells or leukocytes, which in turn are many different types. The third platelets or thrombocytes, each type of cell has its own individual function in the human body. Plasma, the colorless solution, is 90% water. It carries different ions and molecules including proteins, enzymes, hormones, nutrients, and waste materials such as urea, which is a compound of nitrogen waste found in the urine. Fibrinogen is the protein that creates the clot that becomes the congealed blood when the water is removed, dehydrates, and returns to dust. The substance in the red blood cells that is largely responsible for their ability to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide is hemoglobin, the material that gives the cells the red color. It is a protein complex comprising many linked amino acids and occupies almost the entire volume of red blood cells. Essential to its structure and functions is iron. Iron is needed now solely for the magnetism in the blood that keep the involuntary functions of the body working properly. Its atomic weight is 55.847. Its chemical symbol is Fe and atomic number is 26. When these two processes of the blood occur simultaneously, the physical part of the being created his skin of the soil of Gaia, the living organism called Earth whose essence is soil. This Gaia also spelled Gaia is in fact a living organism named after the Greek goddess J or Pangaea or Pangaea meaning all land. And that one land mass being Earth where physical and chemical conditions exist on the surface and within the interior, within the atmosphere. And it is no coincidence that these bones were found in the Isles of Patmos, the mountain region in Thessaly, in the grotto meaning caves in the place called My Own Killing, 
in the Aegean Sea, where Yaqub's grafted seed, the Halabians, Flugelrods, or Hulub, ended up after his travels ended at age 150. These Hindus were used to breed what are called the original Aryan race, seed of the Halabian, Flugelrod, and the regressive gene of the black-skinned, straight-haired beings called the Asiatic Black Man, was grafted into a red man and grafted into a yellow man, then grafted onto the pale man of the grotto or grotte meaning caves the Halabians, flugelrods of 8,400 years ago, whose ruler was Korg. This graftation should not be confused with the albino seed, which is the cursed Canaanites, meaning lowlanders, the albino seed with the curse of leprosy. The descendants of Canaan of 4,004 years ago before 2,000 years ago, or 6,000 years ago, which was the birth of their own Adam, also called Edom, Libana. Because Canaan had ruddy red skin at birth, being born with albinism before departing formed the craft, and when he did blush he transformed to red, giving him the name Edom or Adam, yet his skin was white like milk at birth, and he did get the name Libana for milky white. But thereafter, for his disagreeableness, he was cursed with Sarahath, or in Nuwabic Saruthi, meaning leprosy or a malignant skin disease in the skin of his flesh, to plague him all the days of his life. To the melanin... Michaels has everything to create anything this holiday season. So cute! Shop now. ...members of his family, this recessive melaninite child was called the devil and was chased by his own family from the land of Cadman, and he did end up taking. The physical appearance of the Aryan, the Sanskrit word meaning noble, asterisk, is the albino who lived in the Caucasus, or Caucasian Mountains, which is a region between the Black Sea on the west and the Caspian Sea on the east, a great mountain range which raises to 18,510 feet at Mount Elbrus, from the word abras meaning leprosy in Ashuric, and Saruth in Nuwabic. Caucasia, a part of Russia, has an area of 170,000 square miles. The Greeks named it Caucasia, which is the home of the Flugelrods, as they are called in Elmani or what is called Germany today, and their original name is Halabeans, or Hulub, which is to distinguish themselves from the descendants of Libana, Canaan, the Caucasians, Carcass Asian Caucasian deteriorating Asiatics. Elbrus, or home of those Abrus beings, lepers of the mountains, are also called the sons of Canaan, thus the term abracadabra, a mystical word has used in incantations or as a charm to ward off disease, Originally said Abras Cadaver used to mean the bodies of lepers. These sons of Canaan are those of which the tribe Amorite, meaning mountain dwellers, comes from. Thus they were called Behemoth, the beast of the field, who was also bred into what later became known as Hulub, Flugelrods. They were bred 2,400 years before the cursed seed of Canaan, who was born an albino, but cursed a leper. The original members of the Hulub, Flugelrods, and the Duna Achil, never exited the caverns of the earth to become surface dwellers again. Many of the dissatisfied amongst them came to the surface. They are often called the seven men of the caves with their backs to the light, seeing only shadows of themselves. But of their seeds, did these tribes of beings come, the negroid of the Duna Achil, dark-skinned, woolly hair, wide nose, big lips, and the caucasoid of the flugelrods, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and pale skin. These inhabitants that they are referring to are the flugelrods. Palatquapi was the name of the flugelrods' cavern, which has an entrance in the Thessaly Mountains, a region of east-central Greece between the Pindus Mountains and the Aegean Sea as well. They were all to be healthy, strong, and good breeders. This new god, Yakub, made the flugelrods by genetic splicing called grafting. They were called Gues or Jews, these Asiatic black men with straight hair had a dissatisfied nature. Evil dwelled within them. So their wise scientists met with the elders of the Dune Akiel and they decided to try to graft the evil out of their nature. The results, the flugelrods came out of this genetic splicing and the graftation in attempts to remove their disagreeable side for evil lived within these Asiatic black men, original Hindus, since their evil ancestors came to visit the planet between the time periods of 76 billion years to 66 billion years ago. The outcome of the graftation was the flugelrods, who were bred by mixing in the seed of the Pleiadeans, which is blonde hair and blue-eyed, mixing and grafting from the genes of the Asiatics, black straight-haired and black-skinned, and black-eyed Hindus, grafting from the brown germ to the red germ to the yellow germ, and on into the new earth bread, the flugelrods. Also breeding the abstract, black skin and blue-eyed. 
He set up rules and regulations that they were to abide by under all circumstances. Those of his followers that did not obey him were to have their throats slit from ear to ear and their bodies left on the seashore at high tide. They separated into two groups. The original Halabites or Hulub, this seed moved behind the Caucasus Mountains on up into Russia and became known as the Khazars. The woolly-haired Seven Ether, orientalist of this seed called Asiatics, were known as the Ashkenazims. These are the grafted devils that Yakub created. They are your Flugelrods, original Khazars, and your Asiatics, Ashkenazims. Yet, fire worship became the religion of the Flugelrods, who depended on it for heat and light while in the caverns changing Kalne from the fortress of Anu to the seat of his selfish desires. He did rule over the cursed seed of Canaan, the albino race, melanin recessive who mixed in with the Halabians, Flugelrods, or Hulub, to become the human beast that speaks and dresses. Halal was loved by the Anunnaki because of their mutual nearness and commonalty, but actually he was not of the same species as the other Anunnaki. He took the form of the Halabians, Flugelrods, or Hulub, which were created on Tiamat Earth, 8,400 years ago. This was before the curse of Canaan, 6,000 years ago. The Canaanites Cadman, walking in the midst of man without flesh color, eyes blue, hair yellow, made manifest that you may know the cursed seed of Canaan and albinoism or the grafted seed, the Halabians, Flugelrods or Hulub of Yakub from the original Nuwabian Tahite, Ethiopian Kushite, the Melaninites. So you have Caucasoid and Negroid demons and devils in human form. When the sixth door opened in the lunar logging of the year 1966 of the Gregorian calendar, disagreeable beings descended down into the earth in many forms, including the human beings from the Ashtar Command, the ancestors of the disagreeable Halabians, Flugelrods or Hulub, who now seek to control the planet under the name Children of the Light, simply the Illuminati. Then Yahuwah of the Aluhum ordered Nakash to show himself to Kadman plainly in his own hideous form, this Nakash, meaning Whisperer of the Flugelrods, who roamed the outskirts of the garden called Saude, who was called Behemo, Beast of the Field. Labana's name was later changed to Canaan by Flugelrods when he moved up from the lowland to the caves. Which one is occupied by the Eandlings and the Flugelrods, members of the Flugelrods? The same applied for the malevolent being who when relocated became known as the Hulub, or Flugelrods with their massive machines called Mech, also called Hal. The taros that are lacking in pigmentation are descendants from mixing with the flugelrods. The flugelrods and the daros are related to the Caucasians. Now let me give you an overall summary of the flugelrods. The flugelrods were the original Nordics before they crossbred with different races to acquire the appearance they possess presently. They are the originators of the Nordic race and live in a cavern beneath the Antarctic. They were drafted out of the dark-skinned Hindus by Yakub. They can get as tall as 7 feet and can weigh up to 250 pounds. They enjoy raw meat and cold weather. Their chief name is Korg, Fred, chief of the Flugelrods, the original Halabites meaning to blush or Hulub. Flugelrods became known as the Neanderthals, or simply cavemen eating raw flesh, running around on fours and living in a state of bestiality. They are the Flintstones from the cartoon TV show. They found their way into the inner caverns of the planet. They look primitive but use about 20% of their brain. Many of them took residence there while others in time used the technology and terrorized other innocent tribes. This seed moved behind the Caucasus Mountains and up into Russia and became known as the Karzas. The Karzas became one part of the so-called Jewish guys. Like we said, this pale man or Halabian, Flugelrod should not be confused with the albino seed, the cursed Canaanites, meaning lowlanders, the descendants of Canaan, of 4,000 years ago before 2,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago. The Caucasians who have blonde hair and blue eyes are descendants from the Flugelrods. Canaanite's leprosy is the result of a curse of defected genes passed down to him from his mother Anis, who was an Anakite. Deuteronomy 9. Remember the Flugelrods and Canaanites produce extremely low levels of melanin. Both are melanin recessive beings. The southwestern Semites inhabited Arabia and Ethiopia, while the northwestern Semites occupied the Levant, the regions that used to be Palestine, as well as what is now Syria, Israel, and Lebanon, the regions often referred to in the Bible as Canaan. The whole region was ruled and colonized by the black Egyptians between 2300 and 1900 BCE. The Amorites and Jebusites sacked many of the coastal Canaanite cities. 
All of this was under the patronage. Through the use of ism pronounced ism, which in Arabic means a sin, or anything forbidden, the Caucasians were able to corrupt society, through greed, envy, pride, etc. He took away your society, replacing it with socialism. Our government was polluted with nationalism and our communities converted into communism. We were made to believe that we were individuals, self-existing, socially concerned with human beings and their relations to each other. Latin socialists, socius, companion, mutual sharing in. Socialism, a theory of system of social organization by which the means of production, advocating state ownership of land and property. A political, social and economic system in which the state is governed by an elite party control. A people, race or tribe who have the same language and history constitutes a nation. This definition limits nationalists to a mere few. Nubians here and abroad as a majority, neither speak the language nor live the customs of their ancient fathers of Nubia. We must first realize that as a common people, we have the same history, speak similar languages and have, to this present day, the same oppressor. The people we live under made up their language in America is not really related to these shores or represent a fair share. It's easy to learn and has all of our languages within it. Don't miss out, learn it. Mao was for the Chinese, Lenin was for the Russians, and Marx was for the Germans of whose theories derived from Nubian communities only to be introduced to sin and corruption by the Europeans. This system of government was then injected back into the minds of the Nubians to cause separation and eventual control. Ask us to vote knowing we will not get a fair share. That's not all governments, but many and it's not just against Nubians or either. As strong and robust as Nubians and could not now see Chung's red one, but the pay the ones who can these agreeable rebellious labs in the one is the Sepharad or Sephardim Jew. Whether we're really seeing quadrupedal humans, I don't know. It's never been reported in scientific literature. I never know it. <laughs> Rajit Ullis and his wife have an astounding 18 children. 12 were born healthy, but six had a unique disability. This is Gulen. He staggers as if he's drunk, but he's not. There's something wrong with his balance, but he's still on two feet, not four. Then, one by one, the other children appear. There are four girls and one young man. Hussein has walked like this for 28 years. Very revealing for anthropologists, people who study early human evolution, because what these children have done is to reinvent or rediscover a form of locomotion which very likely does correspond pretty closely to the way our ancestors walked. The affected children are aged between 18 and 34. They all still live at home, cared for by their brothers and sisters, and their parents now. Are superstar humanoid cousins of the Pleistocene era in all their wide-nosed and slope-foreheaded glory? They roamed through Europe and Asia for over 350,000 years before they vanished. This was around the same time our ancestors, the Homo sapiens, decided to take a vacation from Africa and explore the world. We may never know what truly happened to the Neanderthals and why they didn't make it to the present times, but thanks to some hefty archaeological digging and impressive fossil finds, we now know a bit more about them. One theory for their disappearance is that the climate wasn't suitable for them anymore. Supporters of this idea think Mother Nature turned on the Neanderthals and sent them packing. Unfortunately, if we look at Neanderthal archaeological sites in Italy, for example, there are no signs of weather catastrophes that could have wiped out this entire species. Others believe there was a bit of resource competition between Neanderthals and humans. That's why specialists also dug around several other archaeological sites where Neanderthals and sapiens might have rubbed elbows for about 3,000 years. In this case, it does seem that the Neanderthals were a bit behind with their tools. Their technology was like flip phones in the age of VR. But who knows if these two species ever crossed paths in that particular region. The evidence is still fuzzy. How they went extinct isn't the only... For that kind of extreme weather, these impressive nasal skyscrapers turned out to be... If you're a senior, pay very close attention to this... Thank you.
There is only one key to open the device. It's in the stomach of your dead cellmate. You better hurry up. Live or die. Make your choice. Here's what happens if you lose. 